Hello, hello. Uh, I wasn't particularly looking to record right now, but then I saw there's a game up with the rules that I've been talking about. And Miracle of Miracles, I've gotten first turn. Because I've had uh, eight second turns in a row on this rule set trying to record videos, and I wanted to talk a bit about first turn strategy. So the strategy I'm, I'm trying to outline is a chuck the weakest corner that you can take retake the most easily ways. Again, we're on a non-combo rule set, and so I think it's just really useful to have stuff you can take back, and trying to put as many cards on board that you can take back is just great. Uh, the one thing you might add is it's really nice if you can take adjacent A corners. So A933 is my only card really good on its own at taking 10s in one of the corners, so one thing I could do is if I had a good weak corner for 1 or 9, that might be tempting. Because the weakest corner I have is A933 and 3, and that is my best corner for being recaptured. But 49A5 and 9 is also a very weak corner, and I can take one of the adjacent corners if there's a 10 facing out, which could prove useful later. That said, I think I'm going to go for the very weak corner and see what DJ does. Uh, so our strategy here is we're going to try to play as formationally correct as we can, but we're also going to try to make the formationally correct moves that make us most likely to have the captures when they challenge us to have captures. So for instance, if they go in one, one positionally correct is, move is to go in eight, right? That gives them no way to secure, and their likely response is either in 2, 7, or 9. Specifically, 7 and 9 are most likely to be good for them. If they go in 2, I could go in 4, 5, or 6 and have a good position. If they go in 7 or 9, I have to capture it from 4 or 6 to have a promising position. So I'm likely to only play in 8 after they've gone in 1 if I have a capture on at least 1 of 7 or 9, and I'd like to have a capture on both. Here, I'm never going to have a capture on 9, so if they go in 1, I'm probably not going to go in 8. I'm going to go in 7 or 9, and we'll see, depending on what they do. So if they challenge me by going in 1 with a high number facing down, hopefully I can set up in, in 7 against it. But with this hand, I can't really, because I don't have big swings on my up-down numbers, um, and I can't really play off it well. So I might go in 9 and sort of claim I have it anyway. Actually, no, I'll probably go in seven, because the other trick is, okay, they went one with a low number. So this is quite easy for me to take. So I don't have to particularly set up or not set up much. <clears throat> so maybe I should just go for my next weak corner. Weirdly, I actually can't take that from four. So I guess I should set up against it. And... The only moves that set up against it are the 6-up, 7-downs, and 7, so I guess I should use one of those. Again, I'm going to try to keep the game as weak as possible. I'm specifically going in 7 because I need that square to set up against them. And let's go. So I would expect them to go in 2 or 4 now. I've been going sometimes in the games I've been showing in 6 or 8 in equivalent 3-corner formations, 3-corner setups. Uh, I'm trying to call formations standard positions after four or five moves and set up standard positions after three. <clears throat> so here we have a three corner setup and they can challenge by going in two, four, six, or eight kind of thing. If they go in five, I can usually go in nine with a pretty decent situation, especially with these weak corners facing out and a weak corner ready to go in nine. I think five is not a testing move. It doesn't force me to take anything difficult. A testing move would be a 10 facing out from 2 or 4. Um, there's not much reason to go in 6 or 8 because it's easy for me to go in the paired square of 2 or 4 and take the card I need to take. <clears throat> um, 2 and 4 themselves are not hard for me to take, but they could have a high value facing out, though it can be tricky, right? If they go in 2 or 4, I should not go in the other of 2 and 4. I should treat 6 and 8 as the paired squares. So if they go in 2, I'm going to go in 6, and if they go in 4, I'm going to go in 8. And the reason for that is I secure a card, I'm the first to secure a card, and secondly, and more important, they can only secure one in response. So if they go in 4 and I go in 8, they could go in 2 or 5 and they secure one. But if I, they go in 4 and I go in 2, 
they can go in five and secure two cards. So now sometimes if I have a really high out facing, that will be the correct choice, right? If they go in four and I could play in two while taking the card in one, which I and having an A down. Now, my only card with an A down can't do that, so that would not be my move. But if I don't think they have had a way to successfully set up in five, you know, if they play in two with a one facing out, I think it's pretty unlikely they'd set up in five, um, that I might go in the other of two and four. But usually, and this is a really common mistake, and we saw it in one of the games actually, is it's, it's good for the second turn player to go in two and four because the first turn player is really likely to go in the other of two and four, and that is a positional mistake. So I think two and four is usually the best tries. Six and eight are the second best tries. Five and nine I'm a bit skeptical of. I would rather go nine than five. And the reason for that is second turn wants to give hard things to take, and making sure that corner is tough to take is more important than making the center tough to take, because there's so many points of access to the center, it'll never be that tough to take. So I think the kind of standard move a lot of people would play here is six, eight, seven, eight, and four. I'm not gonna make that move. I think that is positionally wrong. I am gonna play four, nine, eight, five, and six. Um, this keeps up my advantage, but note I have not successfully and cannot successfully set up to take their card in two. So by having a really high out facing in two, they've done something really good for them. Um, and if they go in four now, they are they have a good chance to tie or win this game. And this is an argument in some ways against the weak corner strategy. It is very easy for me to take, but if I fall behind here, I can get in trouble. And that is to say, if they go in four now um, and have another 10 out facing, and I can't take that, and I just block five, and they have the double capture in eight, they're going to be up seven, three, and they're going to win. So because that card is also easy for them to take, if I am left playing my last turn in a corner, not a side, I can be in trouble. So there is a way for me to lose this game, even though I've played positionally correctly so far and followed what I think is quite a reasonable weak corner strategy. Now, this is very good for me, um, because now I win. They couldn't have known that I don't have good cards for five, and maybe they didn't have great cards for five themselves. If they had played their A8 four, uh, in four, um, if they had played their A8 four, three, and four, <clears throat> that would have actually set me up really well in five, and I would have just won the game, because Erdrich would have had a triple capture in five, um, I guess double, because the card in six was already mine. That would put me up seven, three. They have a double capture in eight, but six, eight, seven, eight is actually guaranteed to capture anything in nine, because it can plus well tens or nines, it can plus an eight and overpower anything below it. So if they make the wrong play in four, they're just losing on the spot. Here, however, they're losing on the spot as well. And this is where close is a little calculating, but because I have these weak corners and can play next to it, um, as long as I've played positionally correctly, and this is another positionally correct move, I secured a card. Um, my 6-8-7-8 eight, eight is just a dominant sweeper, and that's a win. And so I think their move in two was really good. It challenged me, and it turned out if they played that card specifically in four, they would have lost. But I think they should have kept challenging in a way that this doesn't. This just gives me more weak out facing numbers, and I think... Um, they may have lost the game anyway. It's very easy to lose on second turn. You know, I was sort of moaning a bit in the last couple of videos because I got eight second turns in a row, but I actually put up two wins and one loss over those eight games and I think played pretty well. Um, but it's, you know, there's a, there's a clear first turn advantage. Second turn is looking more to tie and first turn is looking more to win against good opponents. And um, here we can see the strategy going very well. And I just wanted a game on first turn. And just to think about the different ways first turn works, specifically doing these um, weak corner strategies. And second turn looking to challenge and first turn looking to be positionally correct and be able to handle most challenges. So they forced me to have more captures, but they couldn't capture a uh, nine, you know, but it is one of those goofy things, because if they had played a 4, 3, and 4 instead of 5,
they lose by force. If they play a7, 5, 7, and 4 instead of 5, they might have the tie. They might have saved the game. It depends on their last card, um, because I'd have likely played Erdrick in 5, knowing that Freya in 9 has an automatic capture, and they'd have needed a card that could capture both 5 and 7 um, to get the tie. And they may not have had that, because A843 doesn't do that, and potentially, we don't know what their other card is, but it could easily have had low up. So, 7-3 win is pretty big. Uh, pretty pleased with that game. So, I'm going to see if we can get one more game here, because I'd like to, you know, not have videos just be one game. But I think that was a nice example of what I'm thinking about on this rule set. I think people really don't like non-combo very much or treat it as kind of dull. And it is draw-oriented. Like, I've definitely... Um, you know, I've now played nine games and I've drawn over half of them. And there's a sort of wiggle room that makes games flow towards ties in a ways that combo doesn't quite as much. But I think it's pretty interesting, and I think playing precisely is a really good display of fundamentals. Just looking for opportunities to close in cards, recognizing when you want to be setting up easy things to take and when you want to be setting up difficult things to take. And as I I've, suspect I've said before in videos, this is the rule set I sort of really made my bones on, where I started playing, like like everyone else at the time, I started playing level one through four games. Ah, oh, another first turn. All right, well, Ruffles is a very rude to my, my preferred rule set, but what is our weak corner? Now, we have very little up, so a756 is not actually that pleasant a weak corner. And I don't really think we have an appealing one, because we're just so weak going up. So it might be 288a in 7. Two of my cards, uh, well, just only one of my cards can retake that both ways. Um, hmm. So I definitely am not in love with my hand. But that just happens, you know. You're going to have hands that are uncomfortable. If I play on the bottom, I'd like to get rid of one of my cards with an up-facing thing so that my hand is directed more towards the game. Hmm. And if I go on the top, I'd like to get rid of one of my more down-facing cards because those will be cards that will be bad at recapturing the card I just played. Hmm. I'm going to start with what looks like a strong corner. I have one card that can retake both ways, um, a bunch of cards that can retake a second way, and it does get one of my up-facing cards out of my hand. Maybe I should just do it with this one, just to make sure I have more recaptures. Yeah. So this looks half strong, but it's trying to be weak. It's just sort of failing at it because the hand didn't supply. One thing I liked about DJ's rule set in the last game is he had level 9 and 10 on. And with level 9 on, it's much easier to get that ideal weak corner. So I think it's a rule set that actually helps first turn a bit because I had that A933 and that 647A, and it was easier to make weak first turns out of, out of those plays. Um... Yeah, I think I think no combo with set hands is a good rule set. I am uh, trying to show the core fundamentals here, and yeah, uh, what was I saying about the core fundamentals? Yeah, so I switched from playing kind of same plus plus wall closed one through four. I liked same plus plus wall. Wanted to move into randoms. People more play level ten. I think level ten is the best level, uh, though I've at times thought other things. And so I moved to playing this rule set. And I played it for a long time and I got better. And, you know, at first, um, and I think the site was weaker then. Um, a lot of people, you know, I'd play one and they'd play three and I'd just go in two and then I'd lose and be very confused, right? Because they were the first to lock in a card, but it seemed like I should go next to them and take them and support my card. But actually playing next to my card just made it easier for them to lock it in. And I started, I was playing badly, and I, I got better over time and playing games against people like Turds, who is very formationally sound and is the only one that beat us in the prior video. So this is a move people make in 
in closed combo that I think is more suspicious here. Now, I can't capture it from one, which is not ideal. And I want to get a756 out of my hand, but I cannot do so effectively um, because I want to go an eight. So I think my only move is that use cards, I can either play Waka in eight or I can play um, Malak in eight for a six nine or six six eight eight because both of those moves set me up to have a capture in five. It's good to threaten five and both moves uh, I can recapture from nine and those are the only two ones that lock in a card. Uh, Waka strikes me as the more powerful card but Galka is pretty good, and Waka sets me up with more ways to multiple capture and easier capture. So I'm going to just go for the weak corner, right? We've locked in a card, and now we're again setting up with weak corners. Um, yeah, so this was the rule set. I got a lot better at formational play, and then I made the move over to open. And I thought I was good at open, then I started playing the good players and getting smashed. But it did give me an immediate sense of, like, where the likely good move is to be and what some reasons for those moves might be. And so I think I made the adaption to open pretty well and still have a fairly strong fundamental style. And there are lots of good open players that I don't think have particularly kind of good fundamental sense but are very good at other components of the game, either using combo or specific calculations or playing moves that test the opponent in certain ways. Hmm. All right, well, we're likely to run out of down power this game, but I kind of think we have to, uh, we have to start with Malik and five because we got to lock in a card. Um, we, could, we could start with Galka and six. We probably should start with Galka and six because we have the huge triple cap in five. And if they block five, then we have a way to use up Gasper in three. Now we could lose that game. Um, if I go Galka in six, they go five. I use, I'm not sure if it's Gasper, Balthazar, one of the three, Melchior, one of the three uh, Sages in Chrono Trigger. I go Melchior in three. If they can take that with an A facing to the left, because I can't take nine, nine, six, four. So I would think about going in six, but because I have no capture of four from one, I'm just going to make sure I have it flipped anyway, because this is going to be an important card for me to have flipped. And if they go in one, I can go at worst in six. And because I'm up six, four, and they only have single captures, I'm at least guaranteed to tie. I'm very unlikely to win there because a756, I, I haven't found a way to get out of my hand. And like I said at the start, if I play at the bottom, I want to use one of the A's up, because those cards seem dead the way the game's directed, and hoping to find a spot to use the other one. And I have not successfully found a spot to use the other one. There wasn't a way to put it in 8, for instance. Um, so I've been left with a card that I am... that's a very bad endgame card here. But hopefully I can find a way to use it. For instance, if they go in six, I get to use it in one, and I am in a really good situation, probably depending on what they played in six. All right, so that's great to see. So they have the 10 out facing, sadly for them. I have that well covered. Um, here, I actually don't want to go in one because I have a forced win, and if you don't see it, it is worth pausing and um, thinking about it. This is because I'm lucky enough to have the capture in three. I'm going to play the forced win. And uh, so, as we can see, you know, I played eight games and won two on second turn. Um, obviously, this is small samples, but I've won two on first turn, my only two. Uh, first turn is a very real advantage on this rule set and gets to push for the win. But I think trying to defend on second turn is a really interesting project. So how much did he challenge me here? His first move didn't really force me to take anything. His second move put out an A for me to take, but I never actually had to address it. His next move put out another A for me to take, and I do have to address that, but basically I've been forced to take one A this game, and that's usually not quite enough to, uh, to hold. So I guess we're going to call this a video, hopefully shows some of the thinking um, and the formational play of just looking to lock in cards and, you know, 
I think it's a good rule set for learning to play better and moving either from this to closed combo or to open, I think are both viable paths, but I think it is worth spending some time on no combo.